a question for you all. If you saw one of your colleagues, one of your niche mates, people who, somebody who shares a similar industry or niche as you, they provide a similar service to a similar audience, for example, and you saw their website and their about page, about me, about us page, you feel like is influenced by your about page. Like they maybe looked at yours and took some of the words and the phrases and they're using it there. How would you feel? I genuinely am curious. Or if you saw someone's bio, maybe they wrote an article and their, their short bio underneath the article, or you heard them introduce themselves on a podcast or whatever, and you're like, wait, I use some of those words as well. Maybe they, they took, you know, they took it from me, especially if it's someone, you know, that you said, well, it's plausible that they heard your bio or they heard your introduction or they saw your bio or they saw your about page and they got influenced by that, meaning they're borrowing some of that language on their bio, intro, or about page. How would you feel? Please go ahead and chat below. I would love to, to hear uh, your, your honest responses. I, in, in fact, I encourage you to pause this video and respond below because I think this is a good study for everybody to, to know what the genuine reactions are before you unpause it. Ready? Go ahead and comment. I, this is not a <laughs> plea for YouTube comments. I don't care, but I, I'm genuinely interested in, in, your, in your opinions about this. Ready? Pause it. Okay. All right. I'm going to continue on here. I just don't want to bias your answer by sharing what I think about it. Um, so share your answer below. Ready? Okay. All right. So my thought about it is this. If you're noticing unique language you use that they are also now using, it means that the language, well, because for example, if I said, I, I'm a business coach and that, and someone else said, I'm a business coach. I'm, I'm not going to go, oh my God, you copied me because the word business coach is everywhere. I mean, everyone, so many people use it as one example of not, a non-unique descriptor, right? So non-unique descriptors, you, you shouldn't assume they took it from you if it's out in the ether already. But if it's a unique descriptor, so for example, I don't remember anyone else saying authentic business coach before before I started using it very frequently. Now, I'm sure someone else in the world did, but I not in my circles anyway, right? Well, um, now that I've been using authentic business coach, that phrase for at least 10 years, I'm seeing it pop up. I, I actually am quite surprised it didn't pop up sooner. Like I, I was like, I think that's a pretty cool name. And there's a there's fireworks going on, if you heard that. Um, I thought it was a pretty good name. And I thought, you know, probably soon people are going to start using it. But it took years for, for me to start noticing people start using it. And it's usually people who are following me and I see them using Authentic Business Coach. I'm like, oh. And so my reaction is, I'll, I'll tell you my genuine reaction. At first, I was, you know, at first I was like, oh, this person's trying to copy me, right? Slight annoyance was my first reaction. But then... But then my, my reason took over. I'm like, this is good. That means this phrase is out there now. Because, okay, imagine the very first life coach. They call themselves life coach and probably people around them, get, get out of town. What do you mean life coach? What are you talking about? What are you life coach? I have friends I talk to about life or whatever. The first, the first um, plumber. <laughs> what do you mean a plumber? Like we do this ourselves in our own home. And we, we have friends who come over, you know, but then everyone starts calling, you know, people call themselves plumbers. Oh, plumbers. Oh, yeah, I get it. I, oh, people call themselves life coach. Oh, I know what a life coach is. It's, it was in uh, Merriam Webster featured as a word of the year, actually, one, one year. I think this was back in 2012 or something like that. And so authentic business coach, I'm like, oh, who knows? It's funny, funny thing. A as of this recording, Merriam Webster literally has made the, the word of the year for 2023 is authentic. And it's, it's, they said it's thanks to George Cap. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, it was it's a thanks to like Taylor Swift said it two times in 23 and became the word of the year or something like that. You know, <laughs> they don't know anything about George Cap. But who knows? Maybe one day, authentic business coach will be something that is in the market that is that is well known. And and that that at that point, I'd be like, hey, I was one of the first. You know, I could say that. Or or if I said, okay, here's another phrase: joyful productivity. I've been saying that word since 2009. And nobody cared for like 10 years. And really in the last couple of years, I've started to notice other people say joyful productivity. You know, and I'm like, I am so proud. Well, by the way, I, of course, published the, you know, a book as soon as I could. And I made videos about it as soon as I, so 
long story short is here, here's, here's what I'll say. If there is some kind of unique descriptor, you what you should be doing is putting out YouTube videos, YouTube videos, tweets, Twitter and YouTube are great timestamps for the public to say, I was there first. Facebook posts, Inst oh, Instagram posts is another timestamp because you can't edit it. Facebook posts is not as good of a timestamp. LinkedIn and Facebook are not as good of a timestamp because you can edit the post afterwards, you see, so it's not as obvious. But YouTube, for sure, you, meet, you put up a YouTube video. Well, actually, YouTube video titles are not a timestamp because you can edit YouTube video titles anytime. But the spoken thing inside the YouTube video, you cannot edit a YouTube video afterwards, right? I can't edit this YouTube video afterwards, but I can name it whatever I want to. Even 10 years later, I can come back and rename it. But so, so essentially, this is your homework. You've got unique descriptors that you would feel genuinely annoyed if someone else used those unique descriptors. You should be putting content out like crazy with those unique descriptors on YouTube videos, on Instagram posts, because you can't, like I said, you can't edit the image that you post inside an Instagram posts, right? Uh, on Twitter, uh, Twitter, you cannot edit after an hour. So x.com, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Those are all great as timestamps. Not that you're going to go and sue sue anybody. I have no I have I have no energy to not only do I not have energy to sue someone for whatever. I don't even have the energy to chase them down. I don't even have, I don't even have the energy to say, hey, I was there first or whatever. But it's more of a point of personal pride and point of in the future. If in the case you need to say, I was there early or I was there, you can't say you were first because who knows someone else may have you. But you could say, hey, it was one of the it was one of the early people to start using, you know, uh, EFT for musicians. I was one of the early if, if you were that kind of service provider. You see what I mean? So I hope this is helpful and uh, may this liberate you to create more content. That's really my secret agenda is to get you to create more content. So on your on your unique stuff. So I hope this helps. And I want to say one more thing, um, just to kind of re reiterate the fact that the more a unique descriptor or phrase or way of describing something is out there, the more people it's reaching. You see what I mean? Because you're not the only one tirelessly, you know, telling people about this phrase or this unique way of talking about something. Now other people are helping you out to educate the market. And the more a market is educated, the more sales everybody has. So it's actually, you're, you're making the pie they're making the pie bigger for you if they're using your phrase or your descriptor. So I hope this helps.